With recession fears creeping into the economy and prices to eat out on the rise, frozen food sales are heating up for Conagra brands alongside demand for microwave popcorn and sunflower seeds. Conagra brand CFO Dave Marburger is in the Yahoo Finance house. Dave, good to see you in person uh, here for a change. So good quarter for Conagra brands. Are you just seeing consumers that are concerned about watching their budgets trading down to frozen food? Yeah, so we had a great quarter. Sales were up 8.5%. Um, consumption was up over 10%. When COVID started, we had a lot of people that were obviously at home and we converted a lot of new users to, to the brand and that hasn't changed. So we still have a lot of consumers in the brand. Um, we're really pleased with our frozen food sales. We have great brands like Marie Calendar, Bird's Eye, Banquet. All those businesses are up double digits and, and consumers are, are enjoying it. There's a lot of trade down from eating away from home to eating at home and frozen food is benefiting from that. And you all talked on the call about an inflection point in your margins, that you're now able to see margin stabilization and even expansion. Um, are you going into this year, are you going to see the rate of inflation come down or are you even going to see your costs come down to the point where that margin expansion is going to continue? Yeah. So if you look at our portfolio, our basket of goods, we got hit early with inflation. Mm -hmm. So if you go back, our, we're a fiscal year May company. So our fourth quarter end of May, our inflation really inflected. We were almost at 9%. Fiscal 22, our inflation was 16 to 17%. So this year in fiscal 23, we're, we're guiding to 10% inflation, but that's off of a 16% in the prior year and a 5% in the year before that. So on a three-year basis, our inflation's about 30%. So when that happens, your costs go up, you, you have to take price increases, but there's a lag from when that, pr that cost hits your P&L to when you can take prices up to the customer. So that's what this recovery phase is. We finally caught up with our price increases to our customers from the cost increases we've been incurring. So we're confident that the margin inflection we saw in Q2, which was about 300 basis points, will continue for our second half. And, and that 10% inflation that's still gonna be happening, where is that coming from? Because a lot of the food input costs have moderated, right? Um, I don't know what packaging looks like right now, but then of course you also have labor. So talk to me about those different inputs. Yeah, so about two thirds of our cost of goods sold are materials costs, so ingredients and packaging. The other third are conversion costs and transportation costs. So when we look at the 10%, we still have a lot of material areas that are up double digits. So things like sweeteners, dairy, vegetables are up. Some other ingredients are only up moderately or even slightly down, things like poultry or beef, but that's off of record highs in the prior year. We've seen a moderation in transportation costs. So they, they were running double digits last year. They're probably in the mid single digits right now. And our conversion costs, uh, probably high single digits. And that's our labor and overhead in our manufacturing plant. So that, that's the key drivers of the 10%. To what extent in trying to manage costs right now, do you, do you have to kind of implement some even shrinkflation measures that customers may experience? Yeah, it's interesting. We, we are not a believer in that. So we would rather just put the right amount of food in the product and charge the appropriate price. Uh, we find that consumers don't always like that when you try to constantly take no? food out. Don't. No, <laughs> don't take food out of my Power Bowls, Dave. That's right. Don't do it. Don't worry, don't do Brian. It. We're good. All right, I need my cauliflower but, um, rice. But we'll take, we'll take the price up. And so that's what we've done. And, um, and actually, we've seen it. You, you, you see the volumes. We showed a chart in our, in our Q2 earnings last week. When you look at over 52 weeks ended November 19th versus three years ago, our volumes are flat. That's the best in the food industry. So we've taken our prices up over 20% during that period, but the volumes are flat. Now, period to period, you kind of get some swings, but that's really, that's really a support of the investment we've made in our brands, the innovation. I don't think that would have happened in this portfolio 10 years ago. Dave, last night I, I was joking with the team that I, I did have two Power Bowls and I got them from Target, about 450 each a pop, and they didn't taste bad. I mean, do you think frozen food still gets a, a bad, bad rap? It's just you're opening a pack and it tastes like crap. You know, it, Sean always talks about it. You know, it, it, frozen is a temperature state, but for years companies would just cheapen the food when it was in frozen, so there was this perception that frozen food is bad. Frozen food is actually very good, and that's the key to our strategy of driving frozen. We want to put good food in there, flash freeze it so it's ready when you're ready. And the, the quality is great. I eat a lot of Power Bowls. I mean, the Marie Calendar stuff is great. So my, I have three kids that are you know in their 20s and they all eat, eat it and they, they're coming to me and they don't have to and they, and they love our Healthy Choice products. You got a fan in me uh, in, that, in that brand, but 
Well, you got also pressed on the earnings call a little bit, Dave, about the snacks business, and maybe it's not getting the valuation it deserves. Have you run the numbers on that, on, on what it could be worth, and is it time to consider a spinoff? Yeah, so it was, it was a good question. I thought Sean gave a great answer on that. So we, we always talk about we're, we're perpetually looking to modernize the portfolio for better growth and better margins. You can do that organically with the CAG way, which is us driving innovation. You can also do it inorganically, right? If you look at this company since 2016, we've sold or spun off over $7 billion worth of business. So we're not shy when it comes to shareholder value and, and maximizing value. The, the point Sean made, which was a really important one, is when you have a, a portfolio and you decide to maybe sell or spin off a big portion of that, you really need to understand stranded costs, right? Because if you're not going to be able to, to transfer certain costs, they just stay with the remaining business. And that can dilute margins of your, of your base business. And then you don't get the multiple expansion that sometimes you expect. So we look at that all the time. We're constantly looking at both acquisition opportunities and ways to think about the portfolio. And we'll continue to do that. Um, I want to ask about Gardein randomly. Um, you know, I saw the, the video there. We were showing him the product. Because that version of plant-based meat has been around for longer than some of the newer entrants like a Beyond or Impossible. The pure play publicly traded Beyond Meat has collapsed, right? And has seen a lot of demand issues. What are you guys seeing in Gardein? What is the, what is the next phase of the plant-based demand journey, if you will? We're pleased with Gardein. If you look at it on a three-year basis, I think our consumption growth is up over 30%. So we made a decision not to compete in fresh, not to compete in food service in any big way. We're frozen. That's a core competency. So Gardein is a, is a brand that competes in frozen food. So all of our core Gardein products you see in the frozen aisle and frozen continues to grow. And so we, we didn't kind of say we're going to expand this into all different kinds of, you know, away from home channels and, um, you know, refrigerated. We stuck with frozen and we're sticking to that focus and it's paying off for us. On AgriBrand, CFO Dave Marburger joining us here on set. Thanks so much for being kind enough to take the time live in Living Color with Thank us. Thank you for having me. Appreciate it.